Thank you, Mobile Warsaw, for the invitation. And uh, thanks my colleagues from Litech for showing up. Uh, it really means everything. Uh, yeah. So um, this is a bit different talk than the last one. Forget everything that was said. And uh, if you're prepared for a war, that was the strategy. And now this is a solo army. Um, so this presentation is for someone who wants to develop their own app. Maybe be an appreneur, which is like a, a solo entrepreneur who makes applications. Uh, or you just think uh, of apps as your autistic outlet. Um, so what you will get today is behind the scenes of making my two apps, um, reality of making money on the App Store, at least my reality, uh, what does it take to make an app, and you get also free beer from the sponsors. So cheers to that. Um, right, so I was procrastinating a lot uh, while doing this, these slides, and uh, I was watching YouTube, and there was um, a video about a cafe in New York, and the barista said something like, um, baristas are really important because giving people a good cup of coffee can change the whole rhythm of their day. And I found that very interesting, and because I think like if you open your app in the morning, one thing doesn't work, another app doesn't work, something crashes, you cannot log to your bank, you, you can be really pissed, and uh, that actually also changes the rhythm of your day. Um, but I also was thinking, like, what makes a good cup of coffee? And um, there's you no know, bunch of stuff you have to get right. It's like a water filter, you have to have a good coffee. It depends on the beans, the brewing time, the water quality. But if you're going to a cafe, it's, that's not the all that matters. Um, what matters is like how are they serving you the coffee, how much you wait in the queue, um, you know, what's the smell in the cafe. Um, you know, the marketing, before even you get a foot in the doorstep, you already have imagination of what this coffee is going to be. And then, of course, like pricing and other stuff. And uh, yeah, so I think there's, you know, a core thing that makes a coffee, but there's also a lot more. And we're going to focus today on the, uh, not, not the core, but rather the, the things around it. So yeah, let's, let's switch to the app mode. Um, what makes a good app? We can argue that it's architecture, that uh, you know, it's uh, unit tests, uh, you have to pick good libraries, uh, it has to be performant, and that's of course all true, but if you want to ship your own app, that's you know, only like 20% of what you need to know. Um, there's much more. It's like um, you know, getting the right idea, validating the idea, doing the market research, uh, doing the user experience, uh, working on App Store optimization, uh, maybe do some user tests. So, in my experience, like writing the app is the easy, easy part. Um, I've simplified this whole view uh, a bit to two columns. So one column would be the stuff I am not good at, and the other column is like because I'm developer by trade, um, the, the stuff I'm most comfortable with. Um, and I heard you like Swift, so there's one code snippet for you. I uh, r wrote or contributed to over 33 apps. Uh, seven of those I've published on my own, and there's uh, two apps uh, that actually make, uh, made some money. Uh, and uh, these are the apps that we're going to be talking about today. The first app is not even my idea. It's called iNeo Pro, and uh, that's someone else's idea, it's, uh, it's Patrick's idea. Patrick is a guy who posted on a Facebook group called uh, Looking for a Co-Founder, and he posted like a very simple message saying, construction site manager looking for technical co-founder, Patrick. And I was hooked, it was 2016, I didn't have much to do, um, so I wrote to him. We chatted a lot about the idea, he, you know, pitched it to me, he showed me potential customers, he knew the field, uh, he was himself a construction uh, manager, so he knew what he wanted. And, you know, we talked, it was a few days of talking, and then he kind of ghosted me. Um, and this was Patrick, he had all the stuff from the left, and uh, he hired a software house uh, because he thought, you know, Instead of kind of partnering with me, this unknown guy from uh, Facebook, 
he was going to start to do this, uh, do this by his, uh, on his own. So he paid for a very poor quality app, uh, and it was kind of cheap. I think he paid about six thousand dollars for iOS, Android, and backend. Uh, bear in mind, it was like a few years ago. Uh, but you know, after some time, I think he discovered that uh, software is never done. You cannot just pay and expect it to live forever. Uh, there's a continuous development, and uh, everything lives, and you cannot just pay for an app and you know, use it forever. So he wrote me back after one year, <laughs> exactly, uh, if I'm still interested. And yeah, I didn't have anything better to do, so I joined him on this venture. Um, I kind of knew in the back of my head that you know, I kind of need someone like that. I have a history of making stupid applications. Like one of them would be like an mm, app that turns your iPhone into a skateboard, so you can throw it, do some tricks in the air, it recognizes the tricks. Uh, it was pretty useless, but, but fun to do. But we co-founded the app called iNeo Site at the beginning, and later turned iNeo Pro. So this is how it looks on the App Store uh, right now. Mm, the idea is pretty simple. Um, the construction site manager goes around the site every morning, takes some pictures, collects, uh, you know, uh, bugs from the site. Um, you know, he, in the report, he also puts like who is there, maybe a painter, how many workers, and then mm, by the end of his reporting, there's a PDF that he sells to the uh, <coughs> that he sends to the stakeholders. And so, kind of easy app, uh, not many views. Um, it's integrated with the backend, and yeah, um, I have a <coughs> backstage of the actual design and development. So. The app that he paid for, I've trashed it. Actually, both apps, both iOS and Android, were not maintainable. Uh, I had to do it from scratch. So I decided to rewrite the iOS application. And uh, because many construction sites uh, are you know, in the remote areas, we had to figure out a way to support it. And then we decided to stick with the offline database on the phone and Realm. Uh, and it saved our assets later on, so I'll talk about that in a brief moment. Uh, we decided to, to completely trash uh, the Android app because, like, it's a two-man army, and uh, yeah, I didn't know much of you know Android programming, so there was no, just no point at it. And also, part of my responsibilities was to fix the Ruby on Rails backend, uh, simple API, REST API that you know was collecting the data around the reports and then generating PDFs. Uh, on Patrick's side, uh, he was writing um, CO-friendly landing page. Uh, he wrote a lot of uh, multi-language blog posts. He posted on LinkedIn. Um, he even did some called business-to-business uh, -business outreach. And he was experimenting with keywords. So this was totally off my chest, uh, you know, full trust in my co-founder, and he did a very good job at it. Um, because in the next two years, we didn't actually do much. Uh, we saw significant traffic from the web. Uh, there were people organically founding us on the App Store, and the app started making around uh, $700 monthly recurring revenue. And we were selling both as an in-app subscription, but also um, someone would email us, ask for invoice, and it was like business to business stuff. And uh, we didn't do much. I mean, we maybe fixed a bug a month, uh, so it was just passive income. So kind of dream come true. It's not much, but uh, we were, you know, both of us were having other jobs, so this was like a side project for us. And then uh, I have a few stories to tell, because uh, it's pretty funny what, uh, how many things happened to us during these years. So first of all, uh, there was a hard-coded... Uh, <laughs> uh, my number was hard-coded in the app, so you could actually just call me with the button. So if you were uh, opening the app in Poland, you would call me. If you were opening the app elsewhere, you would call Patrick. This is how we split our responsibilities. <laughs> 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 um, and yeah, I got a call. Uh, it was a call from Mieszkanie Plus which is like a governmental housing project that uh, Law and Justice started in effort to kind of build cheap housing for Polish people. Uh, it was a very bizarre experience, like uh, the manager who called me asked me to come to their office and you know, pitch it to his boss. 
And I put on my, you know, the only smart casual uh, <laughs> things I had in my wardrobe and went there. Uh, but to be honest, it was like very weird. Uh, I don't know how to explain the <laughs> the guy, so I put this meme here. Uh, this is what I was like uh, fighting against. He didn't say a word during my presentation. Then he was just, you know, calling his secretary to make more coffee. So <laughs> it's like, you know, it looks like I wasn't just a good deal for him. Maybe he wanted to hire someone from family. I don't know. Uh, but kind of this kind of vibe. But it was interesting that someone called me, and this was like a governmental project. Uh, could have got, uh, gone both ways. Um, and the next one is lit because actually it's fire. So our servers burn down. <laughs> this is uh, that's actually like the biggest uh, single disaster that hit data center. Uh, and we had our web app and our database there with zero backups. Uh, so that was very stressful, uh, I would say. And uh, yeah, everything was down. Uh, we had to start from scratch. But uh, there was a bit of luck, because as I mentioned earlier, we decided to have offline databases on the phones. So the data was not really lost. It was just not there. Uh, so my job was to kind of suck it back into the cloud. And I wrote an app update that was always prioritized data on the phone. And then I set up a new instance of the server. And you know, the next time someone opened the app, it actually sucked all the data back. So we were 99% recover. Uh, we only maybe got a few angry emails. But I think it speaks volume to like how you can prepare for life. Like if I were to spend time thinking about backup mechanisms, stuff I don't know really that much about, I would probably never ship this app or ship it like six months later because you know having a backup is just one uh, one shield, but there's many uh, potential stuff that can happen to your app. Uh, so I'm pretty happy that you can just do stuff and then recover. That was also luck. So uh, I wish that luck to you as well when you when you ship stuff. Uh, anyway. Um, me and Patrick were, you know, like, okay, we, we should probably end this. Uh, we are not spending actively time doing any new features. This, pro this project is stalling. Uh, maybe it's a good time to end this. And uh, we were just about to close it when I thought, okay, maybe it's worth something. something. So I posted on a site called microacquire.com. Now it's called acquire.com. Uh, some businesses actually uh, grow. <laughs> and um, yeah, we sold within two weeks. Uh, there was a guy from a Californian uh, company who was building a portfolio of apps. And uh, we sold it to him for 60K. We split with Patrick, again, like a random guy I made, um, met on Facebook. And we had uh, a huge trust for each other. We actually met face to face like two times in Warsaw. And we went through the acquisition and uh, saw the project and went about our lives. And that kind of concludes uh, the first application. So now it's the next app. It's 2023. There is like a very bad weather in Poland. Um, and I don't have anything that makes money, right? So, mm, you know, it constantly, constantly nags me that, you know, there's a huge internet with huge opportunities. I'm not selling anything. Like, what the fuck? And uh, I bet my cousin, who's actually sitting right there, <laughs> hey Bartek, um, that uh, we should both make something uh, that we can sell online within two months, or we pay each other 10K. And I'm happy to say that we both deliver, uh, delivered on that. Uh, but you know, what could this guy kind of do? Uh, I was solo because we were doing separate projects. And uh, with my skills, uh, I actually had no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I didn't do any market research. Uh, I had no sales strategy, no marketing. I was just had I had just had this vague idea like uh, about what I could do. I had uh, mm, some very nice um, UIs from the internet that I knew I wanted to use in my next app, but uh, you know it was pretty random. Um, but I've published it anyway within the two months. Uh, Visual was supposed to be like a photo to-do list. So instead of typing to-dos, you can just take a picture and then set a reminder to it, and it's like a, that's your to-do. For example, you see a broken light bulb in your house, you don't have to write this down, you take a photo, then uh, you set a reminder, and you, know, you have collections of reminders, stuff like this. You could organize also screenshots and photos with that. But it was many things, and uh, nothing was really uh, well-defined, and again, I started from technology, and I always hear this in the back of my head, uh, that's, uh, 
from Steve Jobs uh, when he said, you've got to start with the customer experience and work backward to the technology. You can start <laughs> with the technology, then try to figure out where to sell it. Uh, yeah, sorry, Steve, uh, I did it again. But uh, I will tell you briefly like what was the backstage of shipping uh, Visual. I actually did a very quick start with storyboards because I already had experience with that. Uh, I wanted to learn SwiftUI, so I did settings in SwiftUI. I decided to use Firebase real time. Great experience again. Like I've used Firebase in the past, it was very bad, but uh, I don't know, give it a try. It actually works wonders. I also decided to do front end, so I wrote Next.js application in, in case someone wanted to sh publicly share the list, which I don't think a single user never actually shared the public list. So that's you know, where I wasted my time. I had a landing page, paywall, so this was all me doing in my spare time, uh, weekends, whatever, evenings. Uh, I had this attitude of like, okay, if I keep shipping good features, then people will come, right? Uh, then I posted <laughs> this on Reddit after one year, uh, 18 app updates, and you know, I was, pub uh, I was uh, posting on Twitter under the uh, uh, built-in public hashtag. And I only made three dollars monthly recurring revenue, uh, and this is like the best sarcastic post on Reddit I've ever seen. Like people were super hyped. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I know that there are people exactly in the same situation who want to do stuff and they, you know, uh, hit the wall. But I, you know, I'm three times better than someone, so <laughs> it's a, it's also maybe it's also a success. Uh, there was also one guy from Poland who thought I wrote 3K monthly recurring revenue and was asking me for advice. <laughs> I couldn't give him any advice because I actually don't know how to make you know, 3K a month. Uh, but there was also one person from Los Angeles who turned out to be a marketer with some spare time and she wanted to help me. Uh, so we switched to WhatsApp and we were texting each other about how to potentially market it. Uh, she ran a few ads. And I think she lost interest. And um, I still have her number, so maybe I'll text her today. Uh, let's see where this goes. Um, so visual, unvalidated idea, full building public Twitter mode. Uh, I have like over 1,000 followers now, mostly thanks to this. Uh, I cut all corners. I was you know, trying to ship as many features as I can. Like in there was. Uh, there were features that I didn't nev that they never actually shipped, but it was like a video recording. Like there were two different AI models in that app. I only left one uh, in the end. So there was a lot of stuff going on, um, but it was live after two months, so that was pretty good. And uh, it's now the app is now making about 25 bucks a month, which pays for our internet internet bills. Uh, it does not even pay for the app store <laughs> bills. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, but I thought what might be important for you is to actually see some numbers, because I come to this meetup uh, every now and then and I like, expect to see some exactly like a backstage. Maybe someone will share what he learned uh, about uh, app shipping. And then I thought, OK, I'm going to be the one who actually shares the private data. Uh, what the hell? Uh, so that's, as you can see, from uh, April 2023 to uh, September 19. Uh, there is one big spike, and that's because uh, there is this um, there is this app called App Raven, where people rate apps, and someone posted Visual saying that this is a great app, so there was a huge spike. Uh, yeah, the whole time it, it made two thousand uh, two hundred dollars. Uh, I wanted to say thousand. Um, yeah, that's it. If someone you know uh, wants more, I, I can always share it. If you're interested in realities of like you know spending one year in eighteen updates, like what you're going to get for it. And that was mostly because I didn't like target properly. It's, I know it's totally my fault, but lessons learned. Um, the next thing I did and I thought, you know, smart is to, you know, do the marketing on Twitter. So build stuff in public. Um, you can decide if it was worth it or not, uh, because the number is like, you know, it's uh, over 1000 impressions. It's 600 downloads. And it's seven dollars, uh, but no matter the money, you know, it, it's not about money, right? It's uh, about the exposure. And uh, if the app was really good and was solving some real problem, I think this is enough of exposure to get it going by the word of mouth. So in the end, I think it was kind of worth 
uh, like tweeting about it. And I'll probably do the same with my next app. Um, that's a, I think, good starting po point for everyone. And uh, that's a screenshot from yesterday. And this is uh, App Store optimization. So how I rank for different keywords on the App Store. And only recently, I started to be really smart about it. Uh, I use you know, ChatGPT to help me generate some more keywords ideas. I go to app figures to see how my competition uh, works and like what kind of keywords they use. Um, if you want to learn more about ASO, you will learn that you know, what's in the title is the most important. Then you have uh, the app description, there's a second one, never repeats the words. So there's a lot of stuff you have to take care of. Uh, but it's, a, it's a, a lot of work. And I'm number three pro for screenshot manager and screenshot organizer. That's not particularly popular keyword. But I think now with iOS 18, there's a lot of users who don't like the new Photos app. And I think they will come. So I'll, I'll keep waiting. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, uh, w you know, if I didn't ship this app in two months, and maybe let's say it took me a year to build it, I would never be in the top three. Like it takes time, so I would suggest like build anything, let it sit on the App Store because it's like a good property. Like it just keeps getting more valuable uh, over time. And uh, I don't have any secrets how to, how to get this right. You know, I'm only starting as well. But there are few apps that I could recommend uh, to use and track keywords and really start doing this because it makes a difference. So what's next? <laughs> For me, uh, I have to transform into GigaChat, uh, or I have to actually work on my legs because I have a chest, and but my, my legs are still pretty weak. Um, what I actually want to do is I want to figure out from analytics what are people you know doing with the app, and I have this small onboarding where I ask. OK, why did you install the app? Do you want to organize screenshot? Do you want to do a photo to-do list? And most people answer with screenshot organization. So that's probably what I'm going to stick with. I'm not sure if there's enough of a market for it, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and marketing, like it's super uncomfortable for me. Uh, I want to probably generate some AI avatars and try to work with videos that will send people uh, to the App Store. So this is almost uh, the end. Uh, I have some advice. So learn what you don't know, and you know, then do it anyway, because you will learn by doing. If I didn't do this app, then I wouldn't know what I know now. Then you know, that's you know, I suck at things. I have to learn about marketing, about sales. Uh, maybe I will buy some course. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, there's a lot to learn. This is like everything that was around the, the blue boxes, everything you know that makes a good cup of coffee, that makes a good app. Uh, attend meetups, it's always fun. Like I, I'm super happy you know, to be part of this community and reach out to me and we can, we can talk apps, whatever. Uh, don't be shy, like no one's going to steal your idea. Even if they do, you know, it's the implementation that matters. Like if you're faster, better iterating, you always win. Uh, and like it never happens. Like Maybe if you have huge success, people will start to follow you. But if you have just an idea and you want to validate it with friends, just do it. Um, and don't over-engineer. Like, trashing f features is what I do like every other day. Uh, I spend time writing one feature, then I just remove it because I don't see any traffic. Uh, I don't see people using it. Like, for example, you could add a note to a photo in visual. Only my mother was using this feature. Uh, she actually got pissed uh, when I removed it, so I have to do it uh, like bring it back. But that was the one person <laughs> for whom I spent so much time coding this. Uh, and ship, yeah, because if you don't ship, you don't know what you're missing. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I you know, talk about these projects on my Twitter, and if you want to reach me, then that's a good place to, to start. And I will take questions if you have any. One question. Have you put your database in some redundant regions? Uh, it's on Firebase now, so I hope they have my back. <laughs> in your first half uh, with your co-founder that take care of the hustle and all the other mm -hmm. things not related to development, uh, did you compare like how he did the, the uh, hustle for the App Store? How how you reach this 700 mark mm -hmm. mostly by like cold marketing and going to the businesses or, or how how he did this? Yeah. So one thing I think. Uh, 
okay, so the question was, did I learn anything from my co-founder as how he was doing the ISO, right? So <laughs> 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 anything more than that? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, it was a different time in 2016, so everything was much easier on the App Store. Uh, but uh, the rules for ISO are the same, and this is the one I already talked about. He also translated the app to many languages, like Norwegian, Swedish, uh, I don't know, Czech. So that also helped. And uh, I, I think there, you know, our website, which was like jennikbudowy.pl, and it was also like the English ineosites.com, uh, whatever, that brought a lot of traffic too, and, and that's not to be neglected. Uh, do you, have, do you already have an idea for the next app? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I have tons of idea, but they don't make any sense. So that's uh, uh, actually like I made a new app a few days ago, uh, <laughs> and uh, people started some trials there. So I'm hoping they're gonna convert. Um, it's a very simple app. It's a um, targeted for couples is like a card games uh, that enable better conversation. Um, yeah, I have tons of idea, but uh, you know, I try to restrict myself and think more about the business uh, first b before I start building. It was not a question, but I'm from HR. It was so interesting. Like, I really enjoyed like everything about your presentation. Just, just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Thank you. Great. The last question. How much your cousin make? I, I think it's zero, right? Is it? Uh, Minus. Yeah, because we had a bet, right? Right. Uh, we had a bet and made an app. Uh, but I was thinking much differently because I was thinking about business. I wanted to make a platform and it was like two installs. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> zero income. <laughs> I had to find a job. <laughs> and here I am. But I don't give up. I think like we have a lot of feedback now. We are, we are thinking much different here. Right. Yeah, we're learning. Like, I also like that we are a community and we can l all learn from each other. So I hope I maybe inspired the next app developer to speak here and, and tell the secrets. Uh, have you ever tried to put your product on Product Hunt? Uh, I know about Product Hunt. Um, and I think one of my old products was there, but none of, no, none of the apps I've talked about. But I think it works these days, say, on Twitter, right?